Hi everybody, Shabri Bird here, Quantum Agriculture, here with Hugh Lovell and our, our newly designed kitchen in Blairsville, Georgia, which we're very happy, happy, happy about. Another story, six months of work, all hand painted by Shabri. <laughs> there you go, Hugh. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I want to make Biodynamic Preparation 508 which is otherwise known as horsetail decoction uh, for my tomatoes. I'm going to plant out some tomatoes. And I want to ensure that they have very strong, erect, like tight and like have good defense from diseases. Huh. And so why does the horsetail decoction called 508 Biodynamic, why does that do that for plants? Why does it do it for Well, it's working with silica. This is one of the first plants that ever developed on the earth, and some of the first organisms that ever developed on the earth were rock eaters. And so they were the primary silica release organisms, the archaea, and they fed this oxidized silica to the horsetail plants and this was one of the earliest plants on earth. Very good. Now what are you going to do today? What are you going to show us? Let's talk about what, what horsetail, how you get it, etc. Well, I buy this herb at the health food store in Murphy, North Carolina. Hall store? And uh, yeah, that's uh, Mark Shields uh, whole store. This one here in the blue bag said it was shaved grass and said it was Equisetum arvenza, but it's actually Equisetum hyamali. Which is what I saw growing at Buck Creek. Which grows in this area. Yeah. But I have never actually seen the arvenza growing here. Now, it grows throughout the Midwest in like moist places in fields, sandy, gravelly spots, and so forth. That's some very important juice, because when Swampy. we were in Ireland, which has too much rain all the time, and places in Norway, uh, there were parts of Ireland that had Equisetum as almost a field plant, and then parts that didn't have any growing, you know, so... Right, and it's kind of spotty here in this country, too. But you'll find in the northern uh, tier of states, there's a lot more of the Equisetum arvenza. In some places, it takes up whole acres in wheat fields and whatnot in Saskatchewan. Yeah, and I noticed that you actually recommended that some people put it in their compost if they have access to it. Yeah, it would be a real useful one for making compost for tomato plants, that's for sure. So now you... Because tomato plants, more than most other plants, have a tendency to be too lush. Okay. And this contains the plant back. It sort of like puts it back inside its skin so that it's protected from the environment around it. Oh, I see. And that way it doesn't get. It's, it's preventive for diseases. It's not curative for diseases. It's preventive. And so when a plant gets too lush, what other plants do you find really could use the horsetail decoction? Well, a lot of plants, squashes and, look, grapes, vineyards, the, this is a particularly good, uh, it's a particularly good preparation to spray in your vineyard when you're having a wet harvest. Harvest time, not in the spring? And yeah, but it hastens the ripening of things. Oh, it does. And the maturity of things. Hmm. So it will get the bricks up on your grapes even though you're not getting enough sunshine and you're getting too much rain. Yeah, because it's silica. Yeah, and it, the silica is what makes photosynthesis efficient. You make the silica efficient, then you get more sugar and you ripen your grapes faster. Yeah, and if you look at the horsetail plant, it's such a silica gesture, you know. It has that very bamboo, oh, straight yeah. cane-like gesture to yeah, it. It doesn't really have proper leaves. You can see here on the Arvenza how fine its leaves are. It's very, very fine. And that's a sign of a really good sulfur activity in the plant. The Hyamali is not as strong in that regard. And this is the Hyamali, which you've put into yeah. about three and, gallons and of... And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make this decoction with it. 
it, to move it on through the system. Right. Next time, I'm going to try to make sure I get the Arvenza. Mm-hmm. But it's reaching the point where now I can probably turn it down. So that was, what, about half a pound and, and three gallons of water? Yeah, something like that, about a half a pound. Good. So do you actually boil it, simmer it? Uh, I'll simmer it. For how long? I'm going to have to put it on the back burner there, I think, to simmer it. Mm-hmm. The stove is great because it's got so many different size burners. I know. You can do just about anything. Our, our like recycled it. stove. We gave our range away to Barefoot Farmer and took this one on, and we're so happy. Yeah, and it's a lighter weight model. Okay. So now let's go on about what we're going to do with this particular. When you say decoction, you mean like an herbal decoction, meaning only simmered and. Well, uh, unlike an infusion, which is a tea, that you pour some boiling water over some dried leaves or something of that sort, this one takes being simmered. For how you long will we to, simmer it? Oh, you simmer it for a half an hour or so. So right now it's getting close to 11. If you want to set the timer for 30 minutes, that'd be great. Great. <clears throat> so do you ferment this? Uh, I can't keep it from fermenting. Okay. So I pour this off, strain it off into uh, these grapefruit juice jugs, plastic jugs, and, uh, and it'll ferment. Yep. And it, we, you, obviously you have to release the steam it out once in a while or the bottle will explode. It doesn't, it doesn't get to that point. Yeah. It gets a little mild, got wild yeast, but it, I haven't ever had any bottles explode. 